Imagine living with something that's invisible and the rest of the world just doesn't understand what it is or why you are the way you are, why you act the way you do, why you speak the way you do. Imagine your brain having a constant party within itself or better yet, having 10 TVs on and 10 radio stations on at the same time and trying to focus on just one. Safe to say you might feel a little crazy, right? Well, that's exactly what ADHD feels like. Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder is a common neurobiological and behavioral disorder affecting both children and adults. According to Karen H. Myers, it affects about 3-5% to of school children in the U.S. and almost the same percentage worldwide. This means that out of 20-30% to of children in a classroom, at least one will have ADHD. Studies also show that 50% of children and adults genetically inherited this condition. Boys are also three times more likely to get diagnosed than girls. Individuals who suffer from this disorder are easily distracted, impulsive, hyperactive. There are many difficulties that they face on a regular basis. However, ADHD also affects not just the individual, but it affects their families, their co-workers, their peers, their school environment. Although this disorder has quite a few controversial issues, society as well as medicine has come a long way in terms of treatment and coping mechanisms. I myself am a proud mother of a child with ADHD. As research shows, it's a roller coaster of emotions and daily struggles that, that not just my child experiences, but I have experienced as well. I always seem to ask myself, why him? Why is it difficult for him to just do it? Or why can't he just listen? Why can't he sit still? Why is he so slow? All of these things never really made sense to me. And soon it became frustrating for both him and I. Something so simple constantly became this vast problem to take care of. Although I knew something was up for a long time, he was recently diagnosed after completing his first year in kindergarten. Myers explains a few of the symptoms. ADHD clearly has inattention, hyperactivity, stubbornness, and impulsivity. These might arise during early childhood and become more evident as you get older into your adult life. Parents and teachers play a big role when it comes to diagnosing a child with ADHD. A hyperactive child will have a hard time sitting still in a classroom setting. You might see them tapping their pencil or fidgeting, fidgeting on the table or grabbing a marker or wiggling and squirming in their own chair. In some instances, children are extremely talkative or seem to have the need to touch everything in sight, which leads us to impulsivity. For instance, my son would usually blurt out an answer without being called, and he would apologize immediately after doing it as if not really understanding why he did it to begin with. Their bodies don't allow them to stop and think before they act or speak. Being patient, even in the simplest occasions, is hard for them to do. Even as an adult, this can be quite a problem. Imagine saying something at work that you don't mean and getting in trouble for it. Or better yet, being, not being able to handle important decisions in your life because you can't think things through rationally. Also, as I mentioned earlier, picture a bunch of TVs on and try to focus on just one. It's not easy. People with ADHD tend to give up or get bored easily. It becomes something they hate to do. For example, for a child, they might dread doing homework. Even with adults, daily living and responsibilities, that becomes so much more, not effortless, but it takes almost everything in you to get something done. Being messy is also very common. They have a hard time keeping their lives in order, just like their head. With their brains going a thousand miles a minute, if you see a messy locker room or a messy cubby or having a messy workplace, this is all very common for ADHD individuals. As hectic as this all may seem, there's a solution to every problem. This brings us to treatments. As Dr. Silver stressed, ADHD is a life disability. Hyperactivity, distractibility, and impulsivity, these are not just regular problems, these are life problems. This concept is important for any clinician, any therapist, any family member, as well as the individual at hand to understand. Why? Because you must alter the treatment according to age, 
whether it involves pharmaceutical drugs, behavioral therapy, neural feedback therapy, and any other coping mechanism. It's important to alter as you get older. Some medications that you might have heard of are Ritalin, Adderall, Dexedrin, all of which stimulate your neurotransmitters in your brain to help soothe your mind and body to relax. Other options, which I have incorporated into my own household, are the use of fidget toys, balancing cushions. Um, I also have little checklists for him to do, like step-by-step -step instructions. Maybe a weighted blanket might help. Soft plush material seems to be very helpful. And simply understanding that a child's brain, in my case, or even an adult's, works differently than that of a person who does not have ADHD. As a teenager or an adult, being proactive is so important. Making yourself notes, charts, checklists, and building routines can help keep you on track to not fall victim to ADHD. ADHD does not define who you are, but rather it becomes a part of your life that you must adjust as you get older. Dale Archer, a well-known psychiatrist and medical doctor, believes when you're always trying to conform to the normal of life, you lose your uniqueness, which can be the foundation of your greatness. ADHD is unique all on its own, but there is a potential for these individuals to actually succeed in every aspect of their life. So don't fall victim to ADHD. It's okay.